Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. This is a late episode of Paint the Town Dead, and I am one half of your very terrible host, Caitlin. Hey, if you're listening to this in the future long enough, like in the future, like you just came to this show, mm-hmm. you don't know that it's late. That's true. You just like, gave it is, away. You're just like, this is a normal episode as far as I know. I didn't keep up at the time. Or wait, what did that guy, What I'm not a terrible host, what did that guy call me on YouTube? Dingy? A dingbat. Dingbat. Which is... Um, I'm your dingbat host. Uh, on 30 Rock, that was the most offensive word they could say when Kenneth took over for uh, Standards and Practices. Oh. Yeah, it's a pretty good show. You should watch it. Okay. But yeah, uh, I'm Andrew, by the way. Oh, hey. I'm the top host. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, yes, I've never been late, and I'm taller than you. I'm on top, baby. I'll let you have it because yeah. you have nothing else. The only thing you have is that you've been on more episodes, technically. Have I? Yeah, because there's one episode oh, yeah, I wasn't you missed, on. You missed. And Actually, two. Well, I was on, if you're talking about the interview episode, I was not at the interview, but I did do a thing with you on that episode. Like, there's an intro or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Intro or outro, I forget. Yeah. Maybe we, both. Just a little bit. But basically, I am technically on that episode. Yeah, you okay, technically. So. You didn't go do the field work. No, absolutely not. I do like that episode. That's one of our earlier episodes, if you can check it out. Yeah, Casey Woody Special is what it's called. Yeah, well, I went and talked with uh, Special Agent Jerry Spurgers with the FBI, who was involved with the Casey Woody case, which is one of those cases that really hits home. And it's very sad, as you would guess. from Very sad. In case from the our content name, of the show. Our name doesn't give it away. We talk about morbid content, which really brings us in... <laughs> To this week's episode. That's right. Let, let us go to it, Caitlin. I don't even know what this one is. I you told me and I forgot. I don't think you really want me to go into it, though. You remember? Oh, I want to know. You remember? Uh, I have to know, though. Isaiah Torres thing? Oh, yeah? Okay. Is it like that? We're going to kind of revisit it, except it's not not really. I mean, not really. It's It involves children. This this case involves a child, and we will talk about violence against children. So Caitlin's be, specialty. Beware. Well, I don't. They're all very, it's very sad for me to read these. And, you know, and we'll kind of talk about this later, I think. But what's the worst is these could have probably been, these might could have, like Isaiah's case and Jersey, Jersey Bridgman's who we're talking about today, both of their cases might could have been prevented. Maybe, definitely in Isaiah's case, I think, but possibly in Jersey's case. And... That's what's heartbreaking about it is the system is just so flawed for kids, I tell you. Yeah, um, I guess you'll get into it, but it, it is um, it is run by people, and some and people are fallible. You're you're right, but this system is especially fallible, especially it. Yeah, we need more good people in the world. Yeah, and sometimes, or even I don't know. Isn't that our song? It, what the world we what the world what the world weeds. Sometimes we need even just less or fewer, whichever the proper term. Fewer apathetic sometimes is yeah. the uh, is yeah. the more answer. people that care, especially about kids. Yeah. Well, why don't you uh, tell us how everything is terrible? I, Let, lead us into it, Caitlin. Get gonna, into it. It's gonna suck. This isn't a very long episode though, um, so it's well, gonna it be sounds like that's short. a good thing. Yeah, uh, we need to rip. <laughs> excuse me. Caitlin's uh, I losing it. it. I burped at somebody in Bath and Body Works today on accident. Yeah, on accident. I opened my mouth to talk and a burp rolled out. I was very, very... Oh, by the way. Yeah? Last week, I just need a note that I was record. If it sounds like I was off, it's because I was recording while passing a kidney stone. So, <laughs> take that. But also, you didn't even know that at the time. You were just like, in pain. I'm dying. I, did, I was, I was, I felt so bad. I felt so bad. I was like, we are going to record this. And then this week, I'm late. It's just been a continuation of problems since last week. So, sorry yeah. about being late, everybody. It's all right. We're not here to hear about your problems. We're okay. here to about, hear about these um, problems. W- way worse problems. W- for I'm, real. I'm guessing. Yes, very much so. Okay. So, we're talking, like I said today, about Jersey Bridgman. Um, so Jersey was born November 14th, 2006 to David and Desiree. Um, and they lived in Bentonville, which is like Northwest Arkansas. Even if you're not from Arkansas, you might have heard of it. It's the Walmart capital kind of of the world. It's where Walmart was made in that area. Yeah. It's where their, their headquarters are. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Also, they have some really cool experimental Walmart stuff there, 
like uh, probably about six years ago, I visited up there and they had a stalls that you drove into and people brought out your groceries. And that, you know, that's really picked up since then. And I've, it was like, it was like Sonic though. It had a bunch of stalls like Sonic. It was pretty cool. And you could, it had a touch screen and you could order right there or you could have ordered ahead. So ordering experimental right, Walmart. Ordering right there seems like a, a real you have to ordeal. Wait, wait for a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, and just also like, I want fruits and then now I want garbage candy and now I want yogurt and now I need to get the orange juice section. It's like. You have to plan out probably in advance. Yeah. Well, which, I've always said if you go to. Which is how you should do a grocery store, really. But. Well, and I've always said if you go to a drive through which is kind of like what this is, you should always have a strategy. You need to have a plan. Yeah. Don't go to a drive through and be like, uh, I don't know. You if you don't know, go in. Yeah. I mean, I know things have been a little wonky lately yeah, with yeah. that, but. Um, We're getting close. Er. Yeah. I watched a wrestling show this weekend, full crowd. Wow. Wow. For one, it was Florida, so you can do whatever. That's true. But I mean, at this point, if you're in Florida and you're not vaccinated, it's because you don't want to be vaccinated. Oh, 100 Same with Arkansas. Oh, yeah. 100%. Everybody can get vaccinated right now. Yes. I'm vaccinated. Number of the beast is flowing through me, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Again, Caitlin, stop stalling. I'm sorry. It's so bad. Okay. Um. So not long after Jersey was born, uh, her parents split up. They I don't know if they were ever married or not, but they split up. Jersey's father, David, married a woman named Jana or Jana, I'm not sure. So we're gonna go with. Uh, I've heard both. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with Jana. Go with whichever one feels best to you, because okay. you're the one telling the story here. Okay. Thank you. I would like to say that Jersey's life was good as she lived with her father and stepmom, but unfortunately, it was not. David and Jana took to chaining Jersey to the dresser as to prevent her from quote wandering out at night and getting into the medication. I was like, medication? What? Like, what child is seeking out medicine? Also, are are they just putting the child-proof containers of medicine on the floor? Like, what are they doing? Yeah, that's your... Why you can do far less restrictive measures to prevent a child from getting into medication. You say they were chaining her to a dresser? Yeah. You put it on top of the dresser. I bet it's too tall for her. Probably not. Speaking from somebody who oh. was a spider monkey and got into everything as a child. Yeah, fair you enough. You have to just put protective locks on stuff. My parents like to tell the story of how I climb, tried to climb out windows and stuff. Yeah. And one time got out and just ran into the street. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. I climbed into a cabinet and drank, uh, I think it was fingernail polish remover. Oh, wow. Or wood polish. One of those. Something that you're not supposed to drink. But it was up in a cabinet. So you have to put locks on the cabinets. I guess it would depend on how high this dresser is or something. Yeah, that's also, because that's what I was... But you can pull out drawers and climb up it. Maybe. As if it's not top heavy. Yeah. I guess it just depends. Anyways, the point yeah. is, that's a bizarre thing to say. And also, like, chaining a child to anything is bad? Is 100% um, bad. Unless your child is, like, a demon, like, pet cemetery. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Or the exorcist? Like, straight up, yeah. Linda Blair? Like, No. <laughs> Agreed. So when authorities somehow, I'm, it, I couldn't find anything that said how authorities found out about the abuse, whether it was reported to them from somebody else or not. But authorities did find out somehow her father and stepmother were arrested um, and they both pled guilty to false imprisonment, permitting abuse and endangering the welfare of a minor. Uh, and David was sentenced to 18 years in prison while Jana was sentenced to 12. So, I mean... Those are pretty good senses. I'm assuming they got out at some point. Probably. And the good news is that if they had other children, they would likely be grown at that point. So they, they couldn't suffer or close to grown. So they couldn't suffer at the hands of David and Jana at that point. So I don't know. But please don't chain your children to dressers. That's... No. If you're doing that, you don't need to have custody of your children. Like, y- y- you're a monster. Um, go ahead and you can give your kids up. Somebody will love them better than you can. Yeah. Even like, I don't know, the, the villains from, a an old movie at an orphanage will treat them better. Like that, that's probably, that's yes. how bad that is. That's really bad. So after their arrest, uh, Jersey was placed in the custody of her mother, Desiree. Um, and I don't know, I don't have details of why, you know, she was placed with David and Jana initially versus Desiree. I don't know any of that, but. Just know that custody switched over to Desiree. 
So Desiree uh, was a good mom. She would work late hours trying to make ends meet for Jersey and her younger sister. Uh, with this, she enlisted the help of her neighbors for babysitting the children when she was running late. Um, it was a husband and wife duo. Her neighbors were Zachary Holly and his wife, Amanda. And they spent quite a bit of time with uh, the girls and with Desiree. Um, I believe that they had children of their own, Zachary and Amanda. So they all played together. Um, they were all well known to each other. Very tight knit, just in and out of each other's houses. Um, so the evening of November 19th, 2012, was just kind of like any other night where Desiree was at work, Zachary and his wife were helping to tend to the girls at their home and they put them to bed there because Desiree was arriving late home from work. So when Desiree did get home, it was around 1130 PM, uh, after her shift at a local convenience store, she went ahead and just went over to the Hollies cause she knew that the girls were there. And she went to thank them and then collect the girls to bring them back over. So Desiree carried over her youngest daughter while Zachary carried Jersey home. And they both laid them to sleep in the same bed at Desiree's house. So sometime during the night, Jersey's sister had a nightmare. So Desiree brought her to her own bedroom or she like walked to Desiree's bedroom. And Desiree was like, well, just sleep with me tonight. So that's where... Um, It doesn't never says Jersey sister's name. I'm not sure what it is. So she was a minor at the time. So the next morning as uh, Desiree got up and about, she went to check on uh, Jersey in her bed and there was something missing and that was Jersey herself. So Jersey's two year old sister was still asleep in mom's bed, but Jersey was nowhere to be found. So that was alarming. That was unlike Jersey. And was not okay. So Desiree kind of frantically called the Hollies, which were her closest neighbors. And she started begging them for help to search for her missing girl. And of course, they're like, yes, we'll do whatever we need to do. So they searched around Desiree's house. They searched in Desiree's house everywhere. They searched the Hollies house and around the Hollies house everywhere. And they lived, I think, in like a a mobile, uh, um, a trailer, kind of like a trailer park home area. Um, So they kind of, they're tight knit neighbors. So they kind of look around and we're looking for the girls uh, for Jersey, but n- nobody could find them. So Desiree reported Jersey missing. Um, and that's when the search began for Des- for I'm sorry, for Jersey. So when police arrived uh, first at Desiree's house, they noticed that nothing really seemed disturbed or missed. There was like no screens cut from the, from any windows. There was no doors busted in or like locks that were messed up or anything like that. Um, and they checked the, the Holly's house as well because they had kind of been back and forth, you know, the night before and nothing was amiss at the Holly's house either. It was just that uh, Jersey was missing. She was just nowhere to be found. So as police began to expand their search from those two homes, they noticed <clears throat> an abandoned home across the street. It was like across the street from Jersey's house and then over like two homes. So it was just like right there. It had a back door that was open, which was unusual. So one of the officers was like, that's weird. I'm going to go check that out. He didn't have a good feeling about it. Everything seemed okay at first until the officers went to a bedroom of the abandoned house. And in the closet of that bedroom, officers did find the nude body of Jersey and she was deceased. Um, So she was six years old at the time. So having found Jersey and having sent her body for an autopsy, the investigation into what happened to her, it began immediately. Police began with those closest to the girl. So first they started with her mom and her family, you know, asking them all the questions and everything. They didn't really see a motive in any of her family or anything. So then they kind of branched out and started questioning others that were close to the family, which included the Hollies. So... As they continue this investigation, they're questioning Zachary, and he's seeming kind of suspicious. So uh, he was like really close to the girls, which was they thought was kind of odd. And of course, the Hollies had been seen with the girls. They had said they were with the girls the night before Jersey went missing. So it was just kind of like, mm, that's kind of weird. So Zachary and Amanda were both very cooperative with police and they denied any knowledge of what happened to Jersey. And when asked, Zachary allowed investigators to obtain a DNA specimen from him as well as collect the clothes he said he was wearing the night of Jersey's disappearance. So he's very cooperative with police. Here's what you do. You go 
can we take the clothes you say you had for your for, during the disappearance? And then, and then they say yes. And you say, but also the clothes you said you didn't. That way you get them. What? Because maybe he's lying about what clothes he was wearing. I mean, that's a high likelihood, yes. See? So, like, the clothes he has on? Like, it's he's the- like, oh, these are the clothes I was wearing, and he hands it to him like a pile. But you think, like, they should test the clothes he has on, too? Or just be like, all give us all clothes. of your clothes or something. I don't that know. There would be a lot of clothes to test for some people. Something. I don't know. I dirty just, clothes. Dirty clothes I'm just pile. thinking, I'm just trying to think of, like, if I'm a criminal. Yeah, of course, I'd be like, oh, these are the clothes I was wearing. I was wearing these suit. clothes. Look at them. Yeah. Aren't they nice and clean, clean and, and pressed? No, no and blood or anything weird. I did laundry recently. Don't worry about it. Exactly. See, see, I try to think of things how a criminal would think about it. But why? Be- to prevent crime from happening to me oh. or to solve crime. Oh. So like, if I'm like, if I were to target a house to rob, would it be my house? Nah, probably not. Okay, <laughs> we're good. So that's how I would... Th- that's how I think about things. You have to stay one step ahead of the game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's just my thinking. I get you. So like, again, if you think he's a criminal, he might be lying about anything, even the clothes he was wearing. So like maybe those... If you were smart, know. you would lie about I it. don't know anything about like how this is going to proceed. So I'm just throwing things out. Well, let me tell you. So when police returned to the Hollies home a couple days later for like some more questioning and stuff... No one was there. No one answered the door, which was very strange. Oh, they were at work? No, they were not. They were just not there. Oh, cool. But Amanda's family did release a statement through a lawyer the following day stating that, quote, Jersey was a very sweet girl who our children and grandchildren considered their best friend. Because of this, we asked for privacy. The children in our family are not dealing well with the loss of their friend, which... Of course they're not. You know, they're one of their best friends and neighbors is not there anymore. It's really hard for a kid to process, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I bet. But also, you made the same amount through your lawyer. Why are you lawyering up over here? Of course, that was Amanda's family. So, but when results were returned from Jersey's autopsy very soon after that, it all happened very quickly. It did not look good. Jersey had been asphyxiated, secondary to strangulation, and had been sexually assaulted. They were able to collect a DNA sample and they sent it for testing and they processed it very quickly. And I think, maybe surprisingly to nobody, the DNA came back as a match to somebody and that person was Zachary Hawley. I mean, if you saw him as a friend of the family, it might be surprising. Yeah, police did not. Well, yeah. He was like the, number one. The, the police beginning. were like, very it's suspicious you. for 100 percent. yeah so yeah. i guess you know sometimes the last episode i did the police were like very very keyed in on one person and it was very much not that person it's not that person. sometimes it's sometimes it's wrong sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong they were yeah. right with this one they were like very focused in and uh they were right so uh <clears throat> Do, 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 do. What was I saying? They got the DNA back. It's Zachary Hawley. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. He's a real son of a bitch, it turns out. <laughs> it turns out he is. So, Hawley was arrested just six days after Jersey's death on November 26. His charges were capital murder, rape, kidnapping, and residential burglary. Zachary pled not guilty to all of them. Which, okay. I mean, good luck to you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, good luck, bro. They got the DNA which seal the deal. Yeah, and like there's like all these articles out there about how um especially it's, be- it's become harder for prosecutors to prove things because shows like CSI make you think DNA is just everywhere. Yeah. And, but if you get the DNA, people are like you got it. You em. got it. And you know, <laughs> DNA has come such a long way. You can literally touch something and leave your DNA now. It used to be like, oh, they had to have like hocked a loogie on the ground, you know, or, you know, bodily fluids. But now it's like you can literally touch something. And not only do they have a fingerprint, but they have your DNA with that touch transfer. And then now the age of justice with the gene- genealogy stuff. I mean, it's just solving cold cases left and right. Age of justice, man. And We're there's cracking still down. some that we don't know. I know. Remember like the like the Eldorado Jane Doe where it's like we kind of know her family, but we still don't know who she is. It's like crazy stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if you remember that d- detail, but like. We still don't know who she is exactly. We just know like she's related to these people and none of them know who she is. She must have been adopted or, or something. something. Yeah, exactly. 
Oh, that's crazy. But, and that's what I think. Uh, and a lot of things are finding that. It's like, what? Who are these people who are my family? <laughs> uh, you're adopted. Also, your cousin's dead. Or or your uncle is your real dad. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff <laughs> like, that. like that. Stuff like that happens too. So, although pleading not guilty, at some point, Zachary did give a recorded confession to police of what occurred the night of Jersey's disappearance and her murder. So, we're going to talk about that. It's not very pleasant. So Zachary said that after the girls, this is the night of November 19th, Zachary said that after the girls were returned back to their home, um, he went back to sleep at his house, but awoke at some point during the night, late at night with an upset stomach. And he said he was clad in his bathrobe and went over to Desiree's house for some Pepto-Bismol or something that she kept there. Um, He opened a side door that had been left unlocked for Desiree's boyfriend and then entered the house. But he would have been able to enter the house either way as he already he and Amanda both had a key to Desiree's house. So they were very all up in each other's houses, apparently coming and going. Yeah, I don't care for this where somebody's yeah. like, I'm going to come to your house for Pepto-Bismol. In the middle of the night for some Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, I lock my bathroom door when I live alone <laughs> and have my front door locked. Yeah. Like that's how private i am yeah. so i can't even fathom no this and she being just acceptable. left it unlocked you know for in you know for her boyfriend and it, is, it was like a side door it wasn't like the front door it was kind of like a side back door and she left it unlocked it was supposed to be for her boyfriend it wasn't supposed to be for anybody else you know what i mean and which makes it creepier i don't know it's a, a boyfriend dog boyfriend door like like a doggy yeah, door exactly like, it's except a boyfriend anybody door. it's just a people door it's a people that door. anybody can go through so it is it's like having a doggy door and flipping raccoon comes in or something like or a bear or a bear well bear might be a little big for a doggy door but oh yeah okay well, so a, a cobra doggy. let's say a cobra comes in <laughs> something horrible like this is a horrible thing yeah. obviously i we haven't heard the thing continue okay so zachary said he looked around and saw that desiree was asleep in her room he then went to the room where jersey and her sister were sleeping quietly woke jersey up picked her up and then carried her to the nearby vacant home. And so whenever this makes me think that whenever Jersey sister said she had a nightmare, I bet it was, they were still asleep in the bed together. It was after that, that she went to her mom's room. So when she said she had like a nightmare, she's a little bitty. She's like two. Uh, that makes me think that it was her, her boogeyman was Zachary Holly. Or at the very least, like, yeah, she wouldn't have thought to say like, it was the neighbor or even like, my sister's not there. Yeah. I'm just having a nightmare or whatever. Yeah. So that's really sad. So again, this is a little graphic here. Um, Zachary took Jersey to the abandoned house and attempted to rape the young girl and she started fighting back. So he, he took her pajama bottoms off and wrapped her pajama bottoms around her neck and strangled her until she stopped struggling. And, and then he did rape her. So when he went to trial, Zachary still kind of maintained his innocence, but was ultimately convicted and sentenced to death, as well as two life terms plus 20 years. So they're like, you're not going anywhere. You killed a child. I'm still of the opinion that I've talked about this. If you have multiple life sentences or whatever, they put your skeleton (laughs) in a cell (laughs) and they leave it there for whatever the life expectancy is. Can you put multiple people in one cell? Yeah, why not? Just have like this is the cell, the where, dead body cell. Yeah, just skeletons in there. What? It's it's it'll be like a a warning for all the other prisoners, even though they're already in prison. At, or at a prison where conceivably like death row inmates are, so it's a bad prison. Um, so or, like so or like they those, do, you know, like the body farm that we talked about. Yeah, they use their body like they're like it doesn't uh, matter like if you gave it. yeah, and, but they do it there, and that like like the death row inmates have to watch as they like do experiments and do tests on their cadavers. I don't know. I like my skeleton idea. No, I like I like dissection in front of other inmates. Be like, this is what you have to. We get basically to come to. up with like the uh, the weird Christian uh, haunted houses where they're like, these are homosexuals and they're all going to hell. Look at this haunted house. I went to one of those once. I was like, what is this? What are we <laughs> this doing? Is, this is bad. This is this Harvest Foods is terrible now. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, he just got all the all the sentences. He had tried to enter a, he said he had tried to enter a plea bargain by pleading guilty 
in return for the death penalty to like be off the table, but the state rejected this deal and was like, nah, brah, we're going full death penalty and you're going to get it. And I mean, they were right. <laughs> so like, was, do you know if the, uh, the confession was entered into the court or was it one of those weird ones where it's like, I think they got to play part of the confession and that's how they were like, yeah, this guy totally did this. And also the DNA part. Of course. And all that. So, but, but then when I was reading, I read like the actual court document. It was actually, it was a, I was just talking to you about this. It was an appeal document because of course, when there's a death penalty, there's an appeal. So it was an appeals document, which kind of recapped, condensed the first trial um, and had, you know, the high points and quotes and stuff. So it, they wouldn't let them talk about, oh, he entered a plea for guilty, but they won't let, like, the state refused it because they want him to get the death penalty. Right. I, I can see why you wouldn't do that. But they did. The reason, I think he did confess to hopefully get that deal, but it never went through. Mm, Does that interesting. make sense? I think so. So. Law stuff sort of makes sense and yeah, then doesn't. Yeah. I Agreed. But that's why, you know, that's why they have to go to school for it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> for a kind of a long time. And when I was reading that, like the la it's a pretty lengthy document and like the first few pages is kind of recap and it's more narrative, but the last multiple pages was like in such and such versus such and such, this point, this point, this point, citation, citation, citation. And I was like, Oh my god, this is so terrible to read. And I just scrolled. Yeah. Those court documents can be a bit um tedious tedious yeah, yeah that's the word i was looking for yeah they can be but there's a lot of there's a lot of good information in there because it is the court document of course it's all right there it is the information it is the really informa yes so zachary would eventually try to overturn his conviction like i said and filed an appeal stating he had received inadequate representation during his first trial but as far as i can tell and what i've read it his appeals haven't been granted or anything he's still on death row yeah. Uh, At a prison that we hadn't heard of, Varner. Varner, which I guess is nearish Pine Bluff. Security, yeah. Pine Bluff was like the geographic place they used right. to reference, which also Cummins is used. People are like, mm -hmm. it's kind of near ish Pine Bluff. That's the most, that's the closest city you've heard of. Mm -hmm. But they're different places. And yeah. uh, we looked it up, and Varner is, um, it's where they keep all the death row inmates. Yes. But they so, don't do the death there. They still do right. the Cummins. Yeah. Because I guess they have the, so I'm sorry, the, the facilities for Not the, deaths, the executions. So after Zachary's trial and conviction, Desiree said of the situation, quote, it has been pretty much an ongoing funeral. Oh, he was sentenced three years after uh, Jersey's murder. So long time. Yeah. Court stuff moves slowly, even when it moves fast, especially with a case like that. Like it's, you got to have all your ducks in a row. Yeah. And like, death penalties on the table here. So yeah, because you don't want to have something where it's like, well, you filed the wrong paperwork, so yes, he gets off, or exactly. we have, or wouldn't even get off. It'd be like it's a mistrial; we have to do it again. Yes, which we've seen happen multiple times. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, so Desiree said it has been pretty much an ongoing funeral. We no longer have to remember a bad day. We get to remember our baby. We get to remember the good times, and no longer have to focus on the nightmare after he was convicted and sentenced and everything. Um. Jersey's death received a lot of national and international attention. I saw um, some stuff from the UK, some articles from the UK on Jersey. And it was mostly due to the conversation of the abuse she suffered prior to her murder. And if more stringent laws for protecting children should be put in place, as well as ways to anticipate violence against children and the situations around them, which I thought was very interesting because like in Isaiah Torres's case, his death and like we've talked in like a uh, Gabriel Fernandez. We talked about that, like their deaths 100% could have been prevented. But for, for Jersey, like, I mean, her mom loved her and her mom right. cared about the, her. The people who abused her were in jail. Right. right? So yes. like, so, and I'm not sure if there was something else going on that I'm not aware of that I didn't read about, but I read a lot of articles, so I, I don't really know. But initially, you know, she, she just went from one abusive situation to another. And was Zachary Holly grooming her? You know, was he abusing her? And we didn't know about it. You know what? Who knows? Cause that just is a big step from being a babysitter basically to being a rapist and a murderer. Yeah. That's a wild step. Yeah. Unless, uh, unless drugs were involved and I'm not aware about it. This I actually meant to ask you about this. Mm -hmm. Um, when we were talking about the younger sister mm -hmm. leaving, to go to the mother's room because yeah. she had a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Do we have a time on like? 
it these said, things? So it had to have been like, I mean, Desiree didn't get back home till around 11.30 p.m. Okay. And then just took the girls back over the house. Probably, I would say, you know, around midnight-ish. So it had to be sometime in the very early morning that, you know, Zachary woke up, came back to the house. And then whenever um, police did find her body, uh, the coroner, or the crime scene guy, whoever does the time of death estimate it was early or the early, early morning hours of the 20th, which it would have had to have been pretty much. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it was a situation where, um, I don't know if this comes up in his confession, but was the younger sister there? Had she already gone or did she, she go in, after? She was in the bed. When, when he, he took came her. in, yeah. okay, that's, just, and that's what I was saying. Like that was maybe her book. Okay, man. I just wanted to make sure we had full clarification on that because that was like my first theory in my head was like she left and like I don't know maybe he saw an opportunity or something. No, so, she was I still in the not, bed, okay. and then he took her, and then and then her Jersey's sister left the room. That's what I gathered. That's basically the timeline from that court document that I was reading. Okay, which by the way, sources are Wikipedia. My Crime Library, Arkansas Online, law.justia.com, which I think was the court case. Um, it is. The, that I go there a lot. Okay. And then, that, I mean, it was actual like court document. Um, yeah. Well, you end up there a lot if you're looking this stuff up. Yes, you do. Um, a little video on YouTube, which was just basically a news thing, and then uh, an article from CBS News. Um, but like I said, I mean, I saw articles from the UK and stuff. I mean, it, it was a lot of conversation about could her death been prevented if there were more stringent stuff in place? But I don't know if her could hers could have. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it doesn't... Maybe if there's, like, something out there of, like, oh, there were all these signs that Zachary Holly right. was doing this or that. Right. But I... And, like, I, I don't know what their home life was, but I believe it said that they um, that they had children, uh, that Zachary and, and Amanda had children. I'm, I'm not certain... But it, I believe they did because it said they were playmates together. Yeah, it did. And um, the thing with uh, Amanda's parents. Right, releasing a statement. L- statement yeah. mentioned grandchildren. Right. Played with, with like Jersey, Jersey and, and all sister. that. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'd may, I don't know if there was abuse going on at home against his own children or anything else. But that's a big escalation from being the nice guy that helps out and a dad and a neighbor to... Rapist and murder. Going from wanting some Pepto Bismol to yes, the most heinous thing possible. And it it said like in his confession, he's like, I don't really know why I was over there just to get the medicine. It's like you had a stomach ache and then you picked up and raped a girl and murdered her. Yeah, a I'd, little girl, a six year old girl, not like <laughs> a, like a little girl, a baby, which is just yeah. disgusting. And so, and this is you know our conversation about you know the death the death. The, the death sentence. Death penalty. Is it appropriate? And I'm like, this guy is disgusting. He wasn't one of the people executed when they were hastily executing people. So no, obviously, I think, he, I think he's still alive. Obviously, they blew it. They must. They have. had the opportunity. <laughs> they did. But I still, I'm still not a big fan of it because of lots of reasons. But you know. this, but this is one of those cut and dry things. Like he confessed to it. His yeah. His DNA was everywhere. I mean, it was. It was. He had the motive. Everything. So. It was 100% him, and he 100% t- just is a waste of oxygen. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, like, if it were always that way, yeah, I would be like, yeah, there would probably be less people offended by the death penalty. Yeah. But it isn't. That's true. And the state, not just this state, but lots of states, right. have shown that they cannot be trusted with this. Yeah. Um, let me say, there are plenty of people's peoples people there are plenty of uh people i will not shed a tear about yes. having them be lethally Gone. injected yes <laughs> at the same but like like richard snell he got what he deserved yes even though clint eastwood says and unforgiven deserves got nothing to do with it which it sometimes do. It, <laughs> it do though. in his case it do have to do with it <laughs> um but yeah i I just, I, I just feel like uh, there's a lot it's of mistakes. too much responsibility, Experience. and people have shown with that they power, can't handle it. With power, I don't know if you've ever seen Spider Man, but I believe that's a, a theme. With power comes responsibility. Some people can't handle that responsibility, yeah. but I think justice was appropriately done in this case. 
Um, yeah. At least he's out. I mean, he's. I don't believe he's been executed yet. I didn't see anything about that. If he was not a part of that group that got executed during the big batch, uh-huh. which I don't think he was, uh-uh. or else I would have had him on a list here. Yeah. Um, then he's not going to get executed anytime soon yeah. because uh, we can't get any more of the midazolam or however you say it and all that. So I wonder why that is such a hard thing to get. Cause like, because companies don't want to sell it to you if they know that's what you're going to do with it. And there are some countries where they can't sell it to you if they know that's what you're going to do with it. I wonder how and they get around that. When, part of, they, part of it were law- from a pharmacy. Well, something? there were lawsuits about it with like, we sold it to Arkansas and they did not say that this is what they were going to do with it. I mean, do they have to so That's part that? of like the I holdups. I, it, you know, it's all kinds of stuff. But yeah, it's it's really difficult to get a hold of those things, which is why like um, Arizona, like there's like some, co- some places are like South Carolina is like, we're going to bring back the firing squad then. Yeah. And Arizona's like, we're going to do gas chambers yeah. using Nazi gas. This is weird. <laughs> like, oh, cool. That's, that might make you sound like the bad guys or something. I don't know. Here's my thing. Some medicines, when they expire, they potentiate, their, their effects potentiate, meaning it, 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 it's exponential. Like it, it gets stronger. So they're, so like some of them, of course, some medicines, their effects become much less, they, they become very weak. I don't know which one verse said midazolam. I don't know which one that is. If it gets better or worse, if it gets higher or lower, but here's the thing, you're killing somebody with it. So does it matter if it's expired? <laughs> I mean, just keep shoving it in until they stop oh. breathing, right? Well, because you're not supposed to torture people. And like, Dude, there's the whole thing of like Versed people... is the way to go. If you're going to go, an, a Versed overdose is how to do it. But that's like part of the thing is like, is it as good as they say? Yes. Especially, but yes. Is, there's like lawsuits about this and yes. all kinds of stuff. So I don't, I don't know. It's basically, but, you have, you basically have a Xanax overdose. But it's also not the only thing they give you. Well, yeah, they, they, give you they give you like I'm a sure. whole cocktail. One of them is like a potassium something or another. Potassium stops w- your heart. The what's her face lady, the potassium. the big lady. Oh yeah, I don't want to call Sherwood. Yes, Christina Riggs. Yes, I, I call her big lady because when they executed her, she was so big it was an issue. Like, Getting an IV. Yeah, like executing yeah. her was an issue. So like it's the whole thing well that was but she did she did she injected her children with the potassium what do you call it it was just just potassium is it just straight potassium yeah like potassium chloride or something like that yeah it's it's like that's what she injected her children with when she murdered them because she thought it would be she was she was an lpn no no straight potassium would not be she thought it was going to kill them like boom straight away that's that was the whole thing oh no and then it it very much did not so first off potassium burns really bad which is why you don't eat bananas <laughs> exactly no that's not are why. you are you a weirdo who's like i can't stand the banana texture yes i am you are okay. i like the flavor the texture is terrible i like banana pudding but i just want the pudding the whipped cream without and the, the wafers without the banana no part. banana <laughs> banana pudding whipped cream and wafers no bananas the worst part about bananas is like the texture no, it's it's the. I like banana bread. It is the timeline in which it is acceptable don't to eat, eat your don't banana. Eat, don't eat, eat it now! Eat it now! It's too late. It really is. It's so like an avocado. It's, it, yeah, it's really frustrating. You're like, I'm gonna stare at this banana. Is it good? Oh, need to wait a day. Need to wait a day. Need to wait a day. Wait the next day, and you're like, oh, I better eat this the next hour. <laughs> the next hour it might change. I don't know. So like, bananas are crazy. I, I w- if I'm going to eat a banana, it needs to be green. A green banana. No. What yes. are you talking about? Because it's firm. What? And the texture is so bad. What are you talking about? Or just don't eat bananas. This eat is banana why you don't like bananas. You're like eating them when they're not good to eat. But when they're yellow, they're too they're mushy. Not, they're not green beans. You don't eat them when they're green. They're too if you're, every single cartoon representation of a banana is yellow. You yep. know why? Because that's when you want to eat the banana, when it is perfectly yellow. She's what are you talking about? <laughs> Green bananas. You are insane. I stand by my statement. You shouldn't. But Get away from that statement. Shove it over and walk away from your statement. You can't, you can't make me. I won't. I can't make people you do anything. With, people agree with me on Nobody this. Nobody agree. Green banana. Yeah. Nobody agrees with that. Uh, actually, That's impossible. People I can, that I work with. A green banana? It's because of the texture. You're insane. You're all insane. <laughs> You're all insane. This is like, 
I know there's like the joke thing of like no pineapples on on pizza or whatever. Yeah. The, the whole thing. Yeah. This is your worst take on food ever. Green. You do not eat bananas when they're green. I'm trying to see like. It's just it's just the texture. That's all. This feels like I feel like you're trolling me. Oh. This feels like when people like post on Twitter and they're like, if do you eat your pop tarts with grilled with the uh, with melted cheese on it or whatever like Ew. some bullcrap trolling Twitter thing where they're just like people are gonna be offended by this and tweet tweet mean things at me, but it's gonna increase my engagement or whatever. Like that that's what I feel like you're doing to me with with this green banana theory. I'm not. It's just because of... Get off me. Okay? Insane. Get off me. Absolutely insane. I will take that. This yes. proves that you do not have good taste. You do not have this refined palate that you're always yabbering on about. I think I do. Clearly you don't. I like toaster strudels, so you can call me fancy if you want to. Yeah, you're <laughs> fancy <laughs> compared to Pop-Tarts, yeah. Exactly. I, I haven't had one of those in forever. They're so good. I haven't either. In fact, today was the first day I've really eaten any food at all. Yeah. And I still don't know how it's going to sit. So we'll find Good out. Good luck to you. We'll find out later. Well, clearly your body's rebelling against you because you're <laughs> eating green bananas. I'm not you're eating. probably eating green bananas and just being like, I'm just going to eat the, the peel to it too. Just like, just bite into it. Just I, like, tastes did, like just the basketball. I did see a thing. Um, people that want like vegan, like meat or barbecue, they're dicing up banana peel and like sauteing it and stuff no they're not for real this is twitter or tiktok trolling this is what this is it this is be. not a real thing I don't this know. is like i refuse Quit to accept this at me. i, I refu- didn't do it you did the green bananas so you're <laughs> getting this i i feel like this is like when people are posting stuff where it's like eat the tide pod uh, no more like the uh i like my chicken to be uh medium Raw. rare yeah. <laughs> it's like no you do not that's nasty you are trolling or you are dying i don't know which one you're doing that's disgusting i went through serve safe certification here in arkansas i know all about how chicken will ruin you if you do not kick, cook it properly <laughs> it's true man i'm very paranoid about that oh my gosh but anyways in serve safe when they're like hey you have to put like the best things go on top the things that will are least likely to kill you go on top. So like they can drip down pre-cooked okay. things. Yeah. yeah. And at the bottom, raw chicken because it will murder you. That's funny. But yeah. Um, insane. The things you've said, this green banana stuff. Well, let's move on to something that's not so insane. What are you looking at? Well, first or, of all, or is it insane? I don't know. <laughs> first, it might be insane. Who's to say? Uh, first of all, we have to do the, our famous segment. How many Star Wars is? Zero. Caitlin, give a real answer. You oh, know yeah, there's one, at least one. one. There's one. You're still wrong. Oh. You're so wrong. Okay. This might be a record for most wrong that you are and a record for most Star Wars that I have looked at. Four? It is four Star Wars. Wow. There are four. There's the Bad Batch. I watched that newest episode, obviously. I started listening to um, a couple of audiobooks. Oh, yeah? Tell me about it. Uh, Darth Bane, Path of Destruction. Listened and finished it. Wow. I would not have finished it if we recorded on time. But, you know, things happen. You're welcome. Um, And then I started listening to Darth Bane, Rule of Two, which is the second book in the Darth Bane trilogy. I was going to say, is there another one? Oh, yeah. And there's one after that called dynasty of well, it's evil not a trilogy it's a quad- there's one after rule of two there's path of destruction that's the first one yep rule of two yep. which i've started oh and then dynasty of oh. evil i see okay um darth bane in let this is a legends book so it doesn't technically count with the new stuff okay anymore uh he's the guy who created the rule of two of the sith um but he does He's still referenced in the Clone Wars series, which does count. They huh. reference him as the guy who creates the Rule of Two, but it would be a different story if they ever revisit it. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's it, that's kind of it. He like joins the Sith army and then beca- he goes to the Sith Academy and and then he's like, Kills these guys, siblings. these guys don't know what they're doing. I'm gonna be the guy oh, now, and okay. then he makes them not be the guys, so he can be the guy, and he finds an apprentice that like. The very end of the first book, because he's like, it's the rule of two. The 
the master to embody the power, the apprentice to crave it, the whole thing. You know, the Sith. Sure. You know what they're about. Evil. Yeah, they're about evil and, and stuff Greed like that. Greed and anger. Um, I think these books are okay so far. They're audiobooks, so I... Mm-hmm. They can be less than good. Yeah. And I could just, like, deal with it. Yeah. I... I think they're overrated so far. I've only listened to the first one and a little bit of the second one. Okay. People flip and love these books. Oh. And I'm not sure why mm-hmm. <laughs> so far. I've, I'm, I've read stuff like that. I'm kind of just like, I don't know. This isn't for me, maybe. But I'm just <laughs> going to listen through them all because what else it's am I going to do with my life? Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? Bad Batch. So we got three there. Fourth one. I read the comic book finally. I've been meaning to do it for a while. Rise of Kylo Ren. How was it? It's pretty good. Cool. It still leaves a lot of questions of like, what's this about? Like, where? how did they meet? How did they know these people? Like, all this stuff. But it's basically about like, how Kylo Ren is like, I'm going to go do bad people stuff now. Yeah, sounds so about right. And then he joins the Knights of Ren and all that stuff. It's pretty good. Okay. It's worth checking out. Um, what, what, what do you got? I have I, a list. You have a list? I mean, I have a list every week. I mean, how many are yours? I have, I have like, two more. But I, have six, I, I like. I have I like, six things on my list. I like the idea of going back and forth. So okay. Yeah, give okay. give uh, give like two or three. Okay. So I'll just say I started a new audiobook. I kind of wanted a break for a minute from uh, the Throne of Glass series, which I'm liking. And I'm how how many have you done? How many do you have to do? I think I have one left. Maybe, oh, maybe two. Books. Okay. One or two books left in the in the series. It's a bunch of books. I don't remember how many. I have one or two books left, but I kind of wanted like just a break for a minute. So I had downloaded a bunch of free audiobooks back in the day, a few weeks, months ago. Yeah, I know. One of them was uh, Libertarian Fantasy Atlas Shrugged. Well, I've never read it. I want to be a well-versed human. Go read your, you have it in your bookshelf for some reason. But I can, I can listen to it easier. Yeah. Because I can't read and also wash the dishes. <laughs> But I can listen to Alternatively, it. just don't read Atlas Shrugged or well, listen pretty, to it. It's pretty low on the list, but if I run out of I imagine, it's, it's very long. It's about people yammering on about trains and how greed is good. So It's not. So I probably won't enjoy that book. But I still need to be a well-versed human. Um, so I started a book called The Ruin, and it is takes place in Ireland, and the audio reader is is irish oh my gosh so you What's know it about? I, love it. I have a thing about ireland finish this talk oh okay um not I'm, really a thing about just a, i'm not really sure yet it's some kind of mystery there's a murder or, or a death or something at the very i'm very i'm only like two chapters in does this feel like uh the kind of murder mystery that's going to end with uh people in a room and somebody's gonna be like i have solved it and it was you, and this is how you did it. And kind then, of feels like and then they go, "Well, that's ridiculous. I couldn't have done it." And then they go, is that "You Irish did." Well, you, that's ridiculous. You couldn't have done it. They do. I mean, that's. I'm just thinking about this because uh, I've started watching Monk, which has this, um, and Psych is also like yes, that. Yes. And I've considered watching um, Murder She Wrote in Columbo <gasps> I because used to love those, watching Murder She Wrote. Those are both also like that, and they're both on Peacock, and I have Peacock. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh. Remember the wrestling? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I'm considering watching those because I, I love just when shows end with a guy in a room with a bunch of people and it's like, you did it. And they go, that's ridiculous. Or you can't prove it. You have no proof. And they go, ha ha, you thought I, I didn't, but proof. I do have proof. Or they also like confess everything right then and there, that, that whole thing. But yeah, continue with the ruin. Sorry. Well, that was it. I mean, I'm very, it's very, you're very early. It. Yeah. I don't know yet. I just like listening to it because. They have Irish words that Irish words that they say, and sounds like you just need to look up like Irish ASMR or something. Just talk to me. That was more British. <laughs> um, um, I also. I was going to ask you real quick. Why? Um, did did um, that Assassin's Creed game, the Assassin's Viking Creed. one? Oh yeah. Uh, the most recent one. They yeah. released a DLC recently. Oh. Have you? No. It's in Ireland. What? Takes place in Ireland. Vikings in Ireland. What? So just uh the heck. Maybe go look that up. That's happening like tonight when we finish. Uh, okay. Um, let's see, what else? Um I watched a bunch of stuff. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. First off, I just want to mention Crime Con is this week, and neither you nor I are there because guess what? Money, number one. Number two, work for me. <laughs> number three. I don't know what we would do there. Like you can go and like 
do podcast stuff there, but we don't have merch or anything because we're such a small operation. But anyways, uh, my friend, friend of the podcast, as 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 another, uh, they say that on um, my favorite murder, and I like that friend of the podcast. Kendall. Except they they probably actually know them. Well, I know Kendall. Oh, I thought you were going to say like a celebrity. No, person. no, 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 no. Kendall. Yeah. Okay. Kendall, my friend Kendall is there. I think with her mom, maybe. So that was she, I saw a picture. So that's fun. She had a cute crime shirt on. So a lot of fun. They do a bunch of panels, celebrities, uh, Paul Holes, and stuff like that. We, uh, we should make shirts where it's just like white t shirts when we write on them with marker. It just says paint the town dead or whatever we'd feel <laughs> like. Yeah, kind of like. Would um, buy- I bought a wrestling shirt like that. Oh my uh, god! Because I don't buy many wrestling shirts because they're usually embarrassing. Mm-hmm. But there is one where it was like uh, this guy was complaining about not having any t-shirts on the website on WWE, and so this other guy was like, "Hey, I made you a, a t-shirt, so you'll stop complaining." And it was just like a white t-shirt, and he just drew like a stick figure of the guy, and it's like, "I am Sami Zayn on it or whatever." Oh my god! I was like, "That's a good shirt. I'm gonna I buy that. that. That's that. that's pretty good. Very I'll, simple design. I'll get it. That's stupid." Why um, not? My money means nothing. <laughs> so what? You, what's your next thing? Uh, I've been playing that there Zelda Breath of the Wild. You have. Tell yeah. me about you, it. You let me borrow the your copy because I'd been thinking about it and I was like, Caitlin yeah. has that and I can just borrow it. Yeah. What, why am I going to buy this? It's pretty um, expensive stuff. Yeah. Well, I saw it on sale for like 40 but that's still $40 okay. more than I spent. Still, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> um, the game's pretty good. Um, I've never played through a Zelda game before, which this means I'm different. not a real gamer. Well, this is different than all the other Zelda games. It, it it's like so I've, open. I've played a little bit of other ones, but never like played them for realsies. Um, and yeah, I was thinking about that, and it's like this both makes me want to and not want to play other Zelda games because like I know they won't be like this really. Um, but in some ways, I think they it translates. Um, I know that Skyward Sword is coming out again. They're yeah. going to re-release. Yeah. Which that one, I remember people didn't even like that much. Like Zelda fans were like, this is like not even a good one. I like Skyward Sword. Did you? Yeah. What about the tutorial? I remember the tutorial was a big talking point that it took forever. Yes, it does. 100%. Okay. Which um, was tutorial in Breath of the Wild is still fairly lengthy. Yeah. I, I guess the tutorial is what like, just like, hey, go do the sh- four shrines and then you can go paraglide off this area. Yes. Yeah. That's what I think the tutorial is, yeah. I, I like uh, some of the cool things they do, uh, if you haven't played it. Number one, just right off the top, what I hate the most oh. about that game, and if it didn't have this point, it would be an amazing game, the stupid weapon thing. When I have a oh. nice weapon, I want it to last until I'm ready to upgrade. And it only lasts for a while, and then you have to go find a new one. Sometimes that new weapon is literally a stick because you can find nothing else. So dislike that. So I haven't had... That has been a little bit of an issue for me. There's a hummingbird in the feeder. I've been uh, I've been very judicious about uh, what weapons I'm using at a time. I'm usually like, well, I've got this sick sword that does 25 damage. I don't yeah. want to use it. I'm going to use this club that does 12 damage unless it's a problem. So here's a good thing. You will die in this game. Oh, yeah. And they are very good about checkpointing you to where you are not very far away from where you were. That's true. So you can be like, okay, I can easily rethink my strategy here. I can go either, uh, I can get the good weapon Away. and use that, or I can go somewhere else for a while or whatever. Like I recently got like um, a bunch of armor finally and upgraded it with yeah. the big fairy lady. Yeah, oh yeah. And uh, so yeah, that's made my life a lot better. I've also, I do every shrine I find uh-huh. if I can. That's what she yes, does. <laughs> it is. I do every shrine I can find yeah. so I can get my stupid hearts up. Mm-hmm. I'm up to like seven hearts now. Ooh. Yeah. I've, I upgraded the stamina once, which I really want to upgrade the stamina, yeah. but I need them hearts better, yeah. more. Um, cool thing they do. So obviously there's the checkpoint thing. Don't. An- another cool don't thing. Don't engage with a, with a, uh, is it a manticore? I don't know. That That's a, those are from the Witcher. It's a lion and, and horse. I have not even seen that. I may have seen something that was like a. I think I may have seen that actually, and I did go around whatever it was. Anytime I see an enemy and I'm like, "What is that?" I go around. Um, oh, Lionels. Was it? Like, do you have a picture? Mm-hmm. I want to see it because I saw something from far away, and there's a couple of them in the game. I didn't. There's th- like four or five of them. Uh, They're so big. Okay, it wasn't one of those. Whatever I saw was not that. My mine may well have been just a moblin, but I saw it from far away, and mm. I was like, I don't. 
This is a different color, Moblin. This is Lionel with a shield up. See, it might have been a line. I think it had like the centaur body looking. Yeah, thing. yeah, that's that's what it is. But, yeah. I, yeah, I don't remember. I like the way they do the climbing. Mm-hmm. Um, Except when it's raining, you can't climb. Raining sucks. Is there an upgrade that fixes that at some point? Don't think so. No. Nah. See, okay, there's a Lionel. It's a good picture of a Lionel. That might have been. I don't remember. They don't engage. Just yeah. don't engage. Just run away fast. They will kill you. They will see the, you. Um, yeah, so like the climbing, the way it works, if if you haven't played this game that came out like four years ago, <laughs> um, if you ever played Skyrim and you're always like going up a mountain and you're kind of like hopping a bunch, yeah, that's not really a thing in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Instead, you can climb everything, virtually everything. Pretty much, yeah. There's a few things where they're like, nah, you can't do that. Um, you just have a stamina bar. If it runs out, you're going to fall. <laughs> But I, I really like that because it's like, hey, screw it. Just go up this wall. Who cares? You can do that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good game. I've, I've been playing it. I like it. I, I like it. It's, it's one of my top games. Did you did you actually finish it? No. It's very hard to finish. You didn't finish it? Uh-uh. It's I just thought, well, I didn't even fight. What it's kind of like Skyrim. Fight? Like, do you finish Skyrim? I mean, like the main quest, yeah. I mean, I finished the main quest. Okay, that's all I'm talking about. That's all. I'm not talking about like... I got all the shrines that were like super hard and crazy. And Some weird. of those shrines are like freaking impossible. There were like a few where I was like, I'll come back. Especially with the robots that are like crazy advanced. And you're like, I like your weapons. I don't like the way you're attacking me though. Yeah, I got I got to a couple shrines where I was like, walk away. A, a, an advanced challenge or whatever the word was. And you're like, nope. I was like, <laughs> let's see how I do. I died instantly. Bye. We'll come back later because you can fast travel to the shrines. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yes. And I like, oh, I like um, the pin system. So you, what you do is like you climb up to something high up and you can see the shrines, the shrines and the towers. I love that they do this. If you haven't been to them, they light up with like bright orange. Mm-hmm. So it's very obvious that they're there. Right. And you can see them from very far away. And then and you, you have not been to them. Yeah. And that's how you, know, yeah, exactly. It's like, I haven't been here mm-hmm. or uh, the shrines. I think they're like part blue, part orange. If you've been to them. Right but you haven't completed them. it, yes, yes. So you, they have a system where like you look through your little, your, your tablet. Yeah, it's a tablet. And, and it's like, uh, you just hit a button and it's like, all right, you pinned the thing you were looking at. So that's on your map now. You can go there. It might take a little while, mm-hmm. but also you can come back to it, all that stuff. That stuff's really well done. And they do a good, uh, how many times did you get struck by lightning and die? Oh, well, that's happened a few times. You definitely want to dis, you, you don't want to carry metal right you can it, still have it but you can't be carrying it right so like that it got me one time and it's, i saw a tip that was like don't carry metal and yes. i was like cool and then get my wood stick out <laughs> last time last time i was in a lightning storm i looked at the menu and it was like if you hovered over everything mm-hmm. it has like so a little, little lightning light, flashing light, lightning thing. thing i was like okay cool that i'm gonna put that away lightning, so not gonna do that fortunately they don't count that for armor yeah i was like I do not want to put away my soldier's armor because <laughs> that stuff is sick. Yeah. And this is a problem if I run into something. Yeah. But so, yeah, that game from like five years ago is really it. good. It's a great game. That everybody's like, this is the best game I've ever played. Yeah. It's quite good. I uh, There's a new game coming out that I was wanting to play. Hyrule Warriors? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, is it Zelda related? Mm-mm. Oh, Mm-mm. Uh, what's it related to? Pokemon Sword and Shield. That no. came out like last year. It was called ago. like, um, is that like a mutated raccoon guy? Biomutant? Yeah, I want to play that. I haven't looked into it. Doesn't well, seem like people care for it. Well, that's what I read is like, and John, because I told John, I was like, I want to play that. And he was like, I read some reviews and it did not get great reviews. But then my friend who works for EA, the, the game company, he said, I don't know why people are crapping all over Biomutant. This is a really fun game and it's really pretty. I think some of the graphics were a little glitched. And people were just crapping all over it because of that. But he said it's a great game to play. It has a 63 on Metacritic. That's not very good. No. So. I mean, I do like Mario stuff. So maybe I'll do something Mario. There you go. Get your Nintendo Switch online. You can play several Marios. Like Mario 1, 2, and 3. And World. And World 2 Yoshi's Island. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, what else? Uh, last thing I have is a comic I've been reading. What is it? It's called Paper Girls. Okay. Um, so they're paper girls. You know, paper uh-huh. boys? Mm-hmm. They're paper girls. Oh. Uh, it's kind of like those old movies from the 80s where it's like, 
a bunch of kids have to do an adventure. It's some sci-fi. It's the Goonies. Goonies is an example. Yeah. Or like uh, modern examples would be like Stranger Things or Super 8. Yeah. It's like yep. a supernatural or sci-fi thing is happening. Yep. And the kids are doing a thing and the parents are like, Bah, what are you talking about? Where you're at. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's the 80s. Who cares? Go ride your bikes around. <laughs> um, but yeah, Paper Girls, it's like uh, these these uh, these Paper Girls. There's four of them. They're out and about on the morning after Halloween. So there's still some, some Halloween Halloween stuff still happening a little bit. Spooky. Some stragglers. Uh, and they find something in the basement of a house that's being constructed. And then a thing happens. And then everybody else pretty much disappears. And then... There's like monsters and I don't know. It's really good. There's there's like great art. And the paper girls fight the monsters. Uh, they've mostly been running away from them because that. they're the like girls. twelve year olds. Yeah. And there's also like because it takes place in the eighties and this is what you do. There's like one of the twelve year old or thirteen year old, however they hold the art, mm-hmm. is like I'm smoking and I'm a girl and what? I'm thirteen. Oh my gosh, smoking cigarettes. If this were 2021, I'd have a vape pen. That's right. But uh. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Like, yeah, like everybody else disappears. The sky turns different. It's like this purpley color and there's like a bunch of constellations and stuff you can see. And they're all like, is this what the sky looks like when there's no lights? And the other girl's like, no, I've been camping. It don't look like that. And also then some pterodactyls are flying around. I'm very confused. Do they go back in time? There is a time travel element potentially in there. It's and there's like a sci-fi man. And it's like all very like we don't know what this is. Let's just keep riding our bikes away. Or there's a part where they're like they they commandeer a station wagon. It's <laughs> like they're twelve year olds. They and, don't know what and, they're doing. Yeah, and they're on a road that is empty because nobody else is around for some reason. Interesting. Well, tell me how it ends. I'm I'm. I I want to know. I got to spend money on it though. Ooh, I, I'd wait for that. Yeah, because um, I read the first volume, the first five issues are on Comixology Unlimited. Mm-hmm. So I got to read it without paying extra money. And now and you need to pay money. And now I need to pay money to read the rest of it. And I think they're coming up close to their final issue in real life. <gasps> and it's only like 30 issues. Oh. So I could probably spend that money. Who knows? Mm. But it's really good. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know how it ends too. Like I got to the end of the last issue that I could read and I was like, I need to know what, I need to know more. I got to keep going. going. Yeah. So I'll let, I'll let you know if I keep keep on that journey okay uh but that's i think that's about it for you for me okay yeah. well i have other things oh i didn't uh, okay sorry i'm not done okay oh, sorry okay thank you um finished devs we talked about that the one with did we the, talk Nick about Offerman. that i'm watching the show i watched the show with it's on fx or something like that it was on hulu um that i watched it it has nick offerman's in it and it's very like sci-fi ish like some Excuse me, I just burped. Uh, something's going on with it. I really liked the show. I thought it was very good. I liked the acting. I liked the story. I thought it was very pretty it's complex. It's like a tech company and there's mm-hmm. a mystery. Mm-hmm. Somebody dies and then things unravel. Uh, and it's a big mystery. Nick Offerman plays a very mysterious person, which is kind of funny. But... It because he plays Ron in Parks and Rec. In case you don't know, and he, he is mysterious in that. <laughs> he is. He still has those like sad hound eyes though that are like bloodshot and saggy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, probably from all the whiskey. It might be, or it could or just be Nick Offerman's eyes and some makeup. Be. It's like I rolled out of bed, and this is what you get. That would be my me. wife, Megan Mullaney, likes this. That's right, Malali, 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 something, Malali, Gail um, from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, Karen from from Will and Grace. What is this? What are we doing here? Um, so I watched Devs, liked it. John was like, me, it was okay, but I liked it. We watched Army of the Dead on Netflix. Is that good? It doesn't look good. It's Here's Zack my, Snyder, so I'm biased against it already. Here is my recommendation. Watch the intro. I've heard that. Sure. Here's, I've heard people are like, the intro is great. Everything yeah, else is not. It was It was a waste of my time. It was a movie that I was like, this acting is horrible, number one. Well, let me, it's an actor, one particular actor. Is it Tignataro? 
<laughs> no. Although she's a very flat actor. I think she's funny, but she was not appropriate for the role. But I know that she was inserted post Okay, I was going to ask if you knew about that. Yes. And the guy that was supposed to be in that role is a flaming douchebag. He is the worst person? Yes. Outside of Zachary Hawley. It would... <laughs> yeah. In fact, if things had continued, he may have been on that path. Th- listen. Because that's kind of... He was targeting children... This underage guy girls, was, yeah. I don't remember the actor's name. It was Chris Delia. Yes, Chris Delia. It was underage girls. He was like Snapchatting and yes. stuff. And there's all kinds of other stuff. Well, Chris Delia is, uh, before I knew all that, whenever he was like, I think he, it wasn't, it wasn't TikTok. It was Vine. He was on Vine. He was Vine famous. He was like comedian. He made little videos. And I, I, I followed him when I was on Vine. But then I was like, why am I following? After like a year, I was like, this guy makes really douchebaggy stuff. And so anyways, He's a total freaking douche. So I don't know why they cast him. Well, I do know why they cast him in that role because that character is kind of douchey. Yeah. But I like Tigny (laughs) Taro. She's just kind of flat for that role. I mean, and so I've only seen stuff about this movie. It was terrible. Yeah. Everything I've seen is like, the intro is great. Yeah. The intro is pretty fun. That's like, you're like, oh, this is a good movie. And then the rest of the movie happens. And you're like, oh. What I don't like, I've seen like clips I don't like the, uh, I'm, I'm stepping all over your segment here. It's okay. Um, I don't like the depth of field thing they're doing in that movie where it seems like everybody in the foreground is like hyper focus and everything in the background is like very blurred. I guess I never noticed that. No, I would have noticed. It. I noticed it in like clips I've seen. I'm just like, why does it look like this? It's very strange. The story went on too long. The acting was some of it was pretty fun, pretty funny. Like I, t- I asked John, I was like, "Is this supposed to be a serious movie?" He's like, "Yeah, I think so." And then I was, I, w- I watched the trailer. I was like, "This is a dark comedy. This is not, this is not a serious movie." And it, it, it was some parts were funny, but it, when they tried to be serious and like emotional, I was like, "This is the wrong venue for this." And it, it was, it fell. That performance fell and was flat and awkward, and there was no chemistry. Who, whose performance are you? Is Dave Batista? Oh no! And the girl. It was made. Yeah, it was his daughter. Yes, she was so bad. She was so terrible. It was really bad. I like Dave Batista as Drax. He's amazing. He's the best as Drax. But in this role, when I don't know, it was pretty like I like you can you know like in Guardians of the Galaxy, he plays Drax. Yeah. And like in that, like you connect with him, like he actually does a really good job. And you're like, whenever he talks about his family and stuff, it like whenever, remember that when he was on Ego's planet and he was telling Mantis about his daughter and how he's like, you remind me of her to yeah. Mantis. And then she reached over and touched him. And then she has the empath power and she could just feel the sorrow. He like, he has a stoic face. He doesn't cry, but she could just like feel his sorrow and she was crying for him. And like that was a really emotional moment. And like you feel you like Drax, he, he has like, something they tried to make emotional stuff with this and it was the worst thing ever it was so awkward and cringy and forced it sounds like it was like very cliche like, yes oh my gosh, my daughter yes. like you can't go there on uh, your yes it another, was really bad another thing that really bothered me i watched the uh, red letter media half in the bag episode on this it's mm-hmm. on youtube um it really soured me on even wanting to watch it because they were like the plot is just aliens like everything that happens, it's straight up aliens. Like what? Like the guy who is there to betray them and then betrays them. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, that's just like the guy from Aliens. Mm-hmm. And then he gets killed by an alien. Mm-hmm. Except in this, he gets killed by a zombie tiger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's like a zombie bu- tiger was pretty cool. There's like a bunch of other examples where it's like, this is just like Aliens, but worse. It this was is the it, entire plot of Aliens. It was not a good movie. It. it was not a good movie. Hey, you should watch Aliens. That movie's pretty good. I've watched it before. It was a long time ago. Oh, it's so good. I need to watch it again. Um, are you, are you in the camp of Alien or Aliens? That's the that's a really important question. What do you mean? Those are two different movies. There's Alien, and the, the sequel the, Aliens. Whatever the OG is. Okay, Alien. I guess so. It's Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. They both have Sigourney Weaver. All four have Sigourney Weaver. Um. Yeah. Um. So don't watch Army of the Dead. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. It set it up for a sequel, and I'm not happy about they that. They have like all this stuff where they're like, we've got a prequel planned, like that's gonna explain this guy, and then we've got this animated series that's gonna be out, and all it, this other it, stuff. It won't make it. There's no it's way. Like it's it's this know. crap. Um, watch a movie called Rebecca, which is based on a book. Apparently, um, it was a mystery thing. It was a British mystery it seemed almost a little bit like hauntish haunty ish haunt ghostish but it wasn't spooky 
it was spooky. Uh, but then it kind of like explained it and it was fine, but it was okay. John did not enjoy it. I don't know, it was okay. It was better than Army of the Dead, I'll tell you that. Um, did a lot of movie watching because I did not feel good this weekend. Um, and then I started a book and I told you about it and you made fun of me because I didn't know. I started a book called The God Delusion. Oh, that thing. By uh, Richard... Uh, Richard Dawkins. Yeah, Richard Dawkins. Idol to every edgy teenager I knew in high school. And that's what you said. And I never like... Okay, here here it is. We hung out with different people. And well, didn't go to the same high school also. No, we did not know each other. <laughs> so I was... Well, we weren't that... You were in Sherwood. I was in, in Central Arkansas. I guess. Sherwood's in, North, in Central Arkansas. I was but in I North was, Little Rock. Yeah. Oh, North Little Rock. Which is okay. more centrally than Conway. Well, whatever. Anyways, uh, I know that, I know we've gone, gone kind of long this episode, but I have to talk about this for a second. So, I grew up in a fundamental Christian household, and I went. I mean, we were at, in my childhood. We were at church every Sunday, every Wednesday, any Saturday that they had an event, anything special. Mom sung in the choir. My dad even participated in a play one time. Uh, it was an Easter play, and he played Pontius Pilate which is appropriate. <laughs> he tried out them acting chops. Was that the one? Is that the one who, wait, who's Pontius Pilate in the story of Christ's death? Uh, he's the one who's like, I washed my hands of this. That's who it was. My dad was that. My dad was that. My dad was the douchebag. Uh, was this the passion play? I was like five or six. So okay. you, you wouldn't remember then maybe. I don't know. But anyways, it was weird seeing my dad on stage. That's the only time I've ever seen it. Anyways, all that to say, I grew up in a very fundamental Christian household. I think I lived a fairly sheltered childhood and adolescence. I had, I enjoyed my time in high school. My two best friends are still, the, my two best friends I had in high school. So, or two of my best friends are still the two best friends I had in high school, but in middle school. And I you know I didn't party. I didn't drink until after my senior year. I mean, it just wasn't like, I didn't do that stuff. And so, but a lot of my friends had progressive views and I am so grateful that they did because they rescued me from what could have been a very terrible lifetime anyways not that all that's bad but all that to say I didn't I had friends that were very intellectual but I didn't know that they if or that they did I don't recall them re, uh, having read this book by Richard Dawkins or having talked about it but it's a book called The God Delusion and I was just kind of reading about some theories and stuff and stumbled upon actually on TikTok. I stumbled upon a video. Um, it was Richard Dawkins and, uh, Stephen Fry, who is a famous Brit. Um, and some other people, uh, uh who's the guy I said? Probably Ricky Gervais. No, it wasn't Ricky Gervais. He was the scientist guy. Um, oh, I don't know. I told you. Why I don't I know blanking? scientists. Yes, you do. He's the famous one. Albert Einstein. No, you goober. Stephen Hawking. No, he was... I don't think he was alive. Then. Carl Sagan. No, he was definitely dead. Then I don't know. Just give me a minute. I've run out. Just give me a minute. Run out of people to talk about. Give me a second and I'm going to find it. Annoying people in high school really loved this book and everything Richard Dawkins <laughs> ever wrote. But I and didn't. said... <laughs> But I didn't. Because th- it was like, the example I gave you is is like uh, this guy I knew would always be like every Christmas time, every November. Cause you'd be Neil out- deGrasse Tyson. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Famous physicist. But like they would always be like, did you know that Christmas wasn't actually when Jesus was born because he would have been born in spring and blah, 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 they took it from the pagans. Yes. It's like, yes, we know. Everybody knows You that. told us. You told us last year and the year before we know. Yeah. Nobody cares. Go away. Well, that's not... <laughs> I don't, I didn't hang out with people like that. Um, but anyways, this book just, it just kind of like talks about, I don't know. He, this guy is a very staunch atheist, very, very staunch atheist that wrote the book. And, you know, he kind of makes fun of people that say they're, um, uh, uh, I want to, I'm trying to say agoraphobic and that's not the right Agnostic. Word. There we go. Thank you. Um, people, he kind of makes fun of people that are agnostic saying like, get off the fence, make a decision. But I don't know. It's kind of interesting to listen to. And it's basically, he's like, if you're going to listen to science about things that, you know, explain everything, science explains everything, but you're not going to listen to science about religion, then like, 
because like it's all a construct and like there is no evidence why is the burden of proof to n- prove that there isn't a god you know by itself like that is the proof that there isn't one you should have the burden of proof to th- that there is one anyways it's just very interesting and i didn't sure but like most religions are based on faith rather than faith. evidence right I, right i always um bristle at the thought of christians when they're like see this is proof of god or whatever and it's like it isn't but that's not the point mm-hmm. the point is to have faith um so you know stop trying to prove it in weird ways that are like not even and that's anything. what he talks about it does, like, it's not but, helpful but that's what he talks about like religion it's like but it's religion is based off the premise of faith so it's like well i shouldn't have to prove anything because it's faith and it's like well then that spits in the face of science because science is facts <laughs> it's not faith it's facts Science is based on things that are observable, provable, testable. Factual. Testable is like the main thing. Um, but yeah, like there's there's no way to like test for God. Like we don't have like an experiment to go. What, and he talks about that too. But the, it's just very interesting to see. And he's like, but if you're going to argue for faith and this, this and this, but. Sounds like I could have written this book. I don't think so. He uses a lot of good words. And I, I can use a thesaurus. Are you kidding me? That's like when Joey from Friends uses a thesaurus and he sounds really stupid. <laughs> Except I can use a thesaurus. I've read books and I, I have Google. There you go. We can use big words. Let's look up big on thesaurus and I can tell you all kinds of words I can use. I can use a cromulent word. Oh. That's from The Simpsons though. Oh, that's that a, is. That, uh, it's a bit from The Simpsons where they're like, somebody uses a fake word, embiggen. Uh, oh. It, that's a good fake word yeah i forget what it is. it's like uh something can embiggen the smallest man or whatever i forget what it is and they're like is embiggen a real word and like uh, of course it's a perfectly cromulent word just made up sh- sh- stuff yes um i can use colossal words i can use mammoth words substantial considerable great far-reaching consequential and weighty words i can use those with the help of this the source online exactly so you can suck it anyways but all that to say it's a very interesting book to listen to i definitely need to like listen to what he's saying though like i can't just be like listen to my murder podcast and doing the dishes but it's a it's definitely a book where you need to like listen yeah it's, it's a it's a heavy book yeah you should listen to um what's that scientology book going clear oh listen yeah to that. yeah i didn't even listen to that. it's so much better than the the hbo documentary which was like good, but it's just you're talk I think I've talked about it. It was like seventeen hour audiobook versus one hour or two hour documentary. Like there's just so much more in the audio. It's so wild too. Yeah. Like there's so much crazy stuff they have to leave out because there's only so much time. I highly recommend that. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I, I like I like culty stuff, so you know what blows my mind? I think we've talked about this before, but I, I revisited this fact and it re blew my mind that Elizabeth Moss the who, Scientologist. And she plays like a an indentured like prego mama cow to in in the handmaid's tale. Yeah. And uh, to a cult, to a cult like dystopian society. I don't know if she said anything about this, but have you seen the thing about Ellie Kemper? Yes. And how she was a part of this beauty pageant for like weird KKK people? Well, they weren't KKK, but they were they, they did were, have supremacist, white supremacist. There's like and they're all connected. They have their origins in KKK. Like they have in literal white supremacy stuff. They have literal pictures of people in KKK outfits with the hood and Here, everything. Here's my thing. She was 19. She was. And like I said, I don't know if she said anything about it. I don't think she's released a statement yet. It's weird to look at if you've watched Kimmy Schmidt. Because Kimmy Schmidt, the show mm-hmm. on Netflix, the whole premise is her in a weird doomsday cult escaping from this creepy man. Like it's kind of similar potentially or like assuming she, I don't know what she thinks about that stuff Mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Like again, I don't know if she's released a statement. Also that Danny Masterson, he's a bad bloke. Yeah. He's on trial for rape. Yeah. Supposedly like some Scientology stuff came out. out For him? Well, because he's a Scientologist. What? Ew. Yeah. Man, he's a bad bloke. But, but everybody is like, just flaying Ellie Kemper. And I want to be like, first off, here's my thing. It was over two decades ago. Yes. 
and she was 19. Not to say that you can't be responsible for your own actions at 19, but she probably was not aware of the terrible depths because in or, when you're indoctrinated in organizations like that, it's all painted. She is like the prophet, blah, 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 whatever she was dubbed and the love and something prophet or something like that. You're in, it's like a sorority. You're indoctrinated into that and you're only going to hear the good parts of it. Whereas like, well, we are a community outreach and we help pay for the underprivileged children. And we do a, um, a debutante ball and we, we crown somebody. I mean, it, it essentially seems like that. And that's probably the only part that she's heard of it and not the racist, you know, connotations to that organization. Yeah. Like it's, it's background and it's roots. She probably was not aware of the depth of it at not, I mean, cause like I said, it's all, it's all pretty picket fence to her. She doesn't have to look at the background. And that's another thing. Like when you're indoctrinated into a religion growing up, like super evangelical Christianity, like you don't, you can't think it's all presented to you that this is the way you should think. And essentially that's probably like, it is like that there. Yeah. And like I said, I have no idea what, like, I don't think she's released a statement on it. Yeah. I tried to Google it real quick. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what she thinks of that now, if she thinks about it at all. But it is interesting that, like you mentioned with Elizabeth Moss in yeah. the in the horrible cult. But Elizabeth Moss is what forty something, and she knows what she's doing. Yeah, like you are you are an adult, and you chose to be in this, and you know what you're doing. Did she choose? Was she? I mean, I don't know when she got into Scientology. I I don't know if she was a Scientology could, baby or not. Could have could have been like like Leah Remini was got into it when she was a kid. So I don't know. So yeah, she grew up in it. Um, um, let me see if I can find. But you know, some people get into stuff later. And, and she was married to Fred Armisen. I didn't that's know weird. that. Did you know that? She's thirty eight, by the way, not forty. I'm sorry. I mean, that's close enough. Especially if you're a woman. Am I right, guys? Got her. Oh, I watched that Friends reunion. Everybody looks old. It's weird. Did you like it? I haven't watched it's it. It's fine. It's just they get together and like, talk about let's it, talk right? about Friends. Okay. And then it's like, here's this side character making a quick cameo. It's Janice. What? Uh, and then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever she I does. saw an episode of Seinfeld with her in it, and she had a regular voice. Yeah, she it, does. It really blew my mind. She played in The Parent Trap. Oh, with did Lindsay she? Lohan, yeah. She was the camp counselor lady. Wow, I haven't seen that movie in so long. I know. Um, Moss practices... This is from her Wikipedia page. All right. Moss practices Scientology and identifies as a feminist. After a fan questioned whether her role in the Hulu series, The Handmaid's Tale, made her think about her involvement with the Church of Scientology... Moss defended her beliefs on Instagram, writing that the idea that Gilead in the series and Scientology, quote, both believe that all outside sources are wrong or evil, as the fan had described, is actually, quote, not true at all. She continued, religious freedom and tolerance and understanding the truth and equal rights for every race, religion, and creed are extremely important to me. I mean, Scientology, they teach you not to look at anything that might be negative towards Scientology, which seems very unfree. And if it can't stand up to scrutiny, then maybe it's a problem. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, if you if you if you can't look at like a negative thing about it and go, oh, well, maybe we should fix this, or maybe, oh, maybe we should that's not right. Fix it, or they're wrong, and this is why, and I can show you why, or maybe it's or something, or but, maybe it's bad, and I need to change something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, the, essentially, Scientology takes away your your ability to self assess. Scientology is a bad time. Don't yeah, do it. Yeah. Don't join a cult. <laughs> don't join a cult. Number one, don't join a cult. Oh, I watched basketball. Cool. I was just going to say, because um, we mentioned Donovan Mitchell was out for that game last week. We talked about it. I, I, I made you talk about it. I have no recollection of yeah, last that's week. Fine. I was passing a kidney stone. Yeah. I have no idea what happened. I, I, I made you uh, talk about that for a second. Like I was like. We need your thoughts, Caitlin. Anyway, the Grizzlies won that game. Yay. Then they lost three straight, and they're probably going to lose tonight. We'll oh, see. Well. And then they'll be out of the playoffs. Is that why you have your Grizzly shirt on? <laughs> this is not even a Grizzly shirt. <laughs> I know. It's like soccer or it something. It is. <laughs> I just wanted to mess with you. <laughs> Sporting Kansas City. That's how much I love sports. U.S. Open Cup champions from whichever year this was. 2015. I don't remember who they played that year. might have been Philadelphia. Although, I will say... I've been to at least two professional basketball games. Hey, we went to one. And then I went off to the track. Yeah. When we went, the main memory I have, 
at least of the game itself, uh, was that Hashim Thabid was playing. Hashim Thabid. Yeah, Grizzlies fans know what I'm talking about. And he looked like he had no idea what he was doing. And it's because he didn't. He was terrible. Worst number two draft pick ever. <laughs> John Morant, great number two draft pick. I my, know what, my man. I have no idea what you're saying. But anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Um, get ready, because next week, you won't remember this, but if you do... There will be more than one Star Wars, most likely. So prepare yourself mentally oh for the gosh. numbers that that could be. Oh I mean, you're guaranteed at least two because there Bad will Batch. be Bad Batch. Yep. And I have the not finished that other book. Right. Could be two just because maybe I finished that book and I start the next one. Could be more because of other reasons. Who's to say? Oh Let's find gosh. out someday. Okay. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Yeah. Other than that. I, That's, I, I'm all tapped I got out. nothing. I watched a lot of movies this weekend. That's why I had so much. Yeah. I say I got nothing. I talked about it like a bunch of stuff. We did. <laughs> so, we did. It, we've actually, this is pretty long. So, yeah. So. Even though it was a short episode. <laughs> yeah. We, I'm just a shmammering. Anywho. Sorry about that. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with us. I'm really sorry that I struggled through last week's episode. I'm really sorry that we came out late with this week's episode. It's just been a whirlwind health wise. So, I'm not going to promise like I normally do that episodes come out every Tuesday because I really don't know what the future is going to hold. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's going to be happening into my body next week. So we'll drop an episode sometime within the next week or two. Um, we usually do it pretty quickly around a Tuesday ish. So Tuesday is the goal anyway. Tuesday is the Look goal. Look at it like that. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. We don't get paid for this. This is a hobby. It's something we enjoy doing on our free time. And sometimes free time just doesn't line up right. And, you know, and, you di- and you're dying during your free time. So it's kind of hard. Even Steph Curry misses a shot every once in a while. That's right. That's so right. Our our completion percentage is probably better than his shooting percentage, to be honest. Technically, we've completed like 99%. We just missed that one 59th week that everybody does. Yeah. That episode. Well, I guess if we like take a, if we add in like the late ones... I think our percentage is really high. If it, if we were We've only been late if we like were, three times, I if think? we were to convert that to a shooting percentage in basketball, mm-hmm. we would be the greatest basketball player of all time. Steph Curry could uh, suck it. That's right. He would go and probably retire. He'd be ashamed of how much better we were. We'd be incredible. Exactly. Okay, but we don't play basketball. But we're still incredible. I try to play basketball and I'm really bad. Me too. Yeah. Any sports are really bad. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Anyway, um, but thank you for sticking with us. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate you guys. Um, we are Paint the Town Dead. You can catch us on Facebook at Paint the Town Dead. You can catch us on Instagram at Paint the Town Dead, all one word. You can catch us on Twitter at P-T-T-D Pod. You can email us at P-T-T-D Pod at gmail.com. Um, when you see a post or anything, please subscribe to it. Comment nice things on it uh share like subscribe anything any interaction you have helps us and we greatly appreciate it um so yeah send money yeah we haven't figured out how to do that we're we're not we we don't have (laughs) a patreon Uh, we don't we don't do that uh we we we, it was just a hobby that we like doing for you We'll start, we should start a Patreon and the bonus podcast on there will just be me talking about whatever random <laughs> Star Wars thing for Ooh, an amount of time. Oh, yay. Who wants to pay for that? Yeah. We did have some recorded episodes for a possible Yeah, thing. we'll, we'll Those see. Those may never see the light of day. Uh, probably but for the best that they don't. <laughs> Those are hidden. Anywho. Okay, guys. Well, we'll see you probably next week. I make no promises, but hopefully we do then. Until then, guys, stay safe. Please stay healthy. And we'll see you later. Goodbye.